All right, welcome to the January 30th, holy cow, 2024 Aries Cloud Agent Python Maintainers Meeting. PR has issues release 1.00. Um, and then just a status update on um, ACPI for non-creds in W3C, <clears throat> if there is any. Um, we're recording, so we'll post. I'll post that after. Reminder, a Linux Foundation meeting and a Hyperledger Foundation meeting. So the Linux uh, Foundation antitrust policy is in effect, as is the Hyperledger Code of Conduct. Feel free to sign in. Agenda meeting, agenda for the meeting is now in the chat. Well, let's get started. Um, PRs, um, let's take a quick look at what we've got. Um, pinning block version seems fine to me. I ran into some interesting fun stuff by putting a minor change in and couldn't figure out how I got a thousand black changes, so I'm not quite sure what that is. Um, parcel revert of connection record schema changes. Um, Daniel? Yeah, um, <clears throat> so in the PR that I did that just fixed the open API generation, I also tweaked the, the connection record um, usage, connection record schema usage within the admin API. Uh, switched it to using a stored connection record variant. So like the, the open API would actually reflect that the connection ID is always going to be set at the time that it's being returned uh, in the admin API. Okay. Um, but my usage of stored con connection record actually changed the open API. So it also used stored con record. Um, so I, I just did some minor tweaks, rearrangement to get it back to the original name of con record. Uh, but still have the the same characteristics of uh, okay. indicating that the connection ID is set. So, yeah, it shouldn't impact anything. Um, I think the the integration test failures are the same non creds related ones that we've been seeing. Okay, so yeah. I, I, we'll play with the order of these. Um, there's no objections to merging either of these. Um, presumably that's just a very small change. Yeah. So this is just yeah. aligning all of the different places where these tools are present yeah. to the yeah. same version. Got it. So. Cool. <clears throat> this one is the one we wanted to discuss. Patrick's here as well. Um, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So this one, we're probably not going to merge it. Uh, we're looking at other alternatives. So me and Daniel were just having discussion. So I've found other things after the last comment I've put in, but it seemed like the problem here has to do with the PI LD library um, validating values as false. And they provide default values of some argument as false, but the problem is with Python an empty dictionary is also considered as false when you uh, compare in Python logic. So sometimes it wants to check if there were if it's false because that's the default value it processes. But if it's actually providing an empty dictionary, it will also consider it as false. So it falls into some checks that it shouldn't in the code. Uh, in the, in the traceability context, uh, there's a lot of definition with an empty dictionary as the context value. So there's like two things going on. There's the traceability context having some terms that have an empty context field, which is a dictionary. And then there's the PyLD library uh, accessing this as a false value when it should access it as an empty object. So I'm still making some tests. I'm moving further along in the, the traceability context by changing a bit the library. So I still need to do some text, some tests, but the goal would be, I think, first to address this issue in the PyLD library. Uh, it's an old library, as we found, like it hasn't been updated, yeah. I think it's been four years. Uh, however, it's made by Digital Bazaar, so it's, you know, it should be fairly solid. Um, some of the maintainers are at the VCAPI meeting. Uh, I think Dave Longy is one of the yeah. maintainers there and Manu. So I will 
uh, bring it to them. But the problem is actually in the context resolver uh, at line, uh, if you click on the left uh, context resolver. At yeah, line I think we got to 68, it, this one. So. Yeah, it's like a, another one further. It's the same thing, uh, but it's like on the context resolver file at line 68 uh, on the left, it's the same kind of logic, but it actually happens before this, like there's a similar uh, 66, line 66. I think that's the step it happens before. And if you go up at the beginning of that function, um, or any, anyway, it's, it's another function, it's a bit nested, but yeah. So that's the point I'm at there. They provide a false as the default value and it, it's actually being passed an empty dictionary and then it considers that false because that's just how Python does the, yeah. the logic. Uh, I think, you know, I don't know in JavaScript how objects are managed, but it maybe uh, it's like a bit different and it's probably just a language sort of difference. So now, yeah, uh, I will bring this up this afternoon. So there's the traceability call this afternoon and the VC API. So I will bring it up uh, okay. at this meeting. Ideally, we wouldn't want to have to change Akapai for this because as far as I know, Akapai is doing what's supposed to be done. Yeah. Close, close. When was the last time anything was merged into this? 2020? That's not good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like, I think uh, Daniel said he made some research of this like alternate package that does this, and there, there's none really, I think. Uh, and I, as far as I know, like the library is good. Uh, it's just that small bug that for some yeah. reason was uh, undiscovered. So. Yeah. I'm okay. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, I, uh, as you might have seen while you were doing that, I switched it to draft. Well, yeah. We sorry. Running, I, I need so... to. Uh, yeah. yeah oh, that's yeah, okay. To... Yeah, so that, remember, that's... once you are ready, switch it back from draft. Yeah. Uh, I mean, ideally, there should be no PR. Like, if we can resolve this on the external packages, that would be the best. Okay. Either that's being the traceability context or the PyLD library. Yeah. Um, this one I think is okay. So lots of file change, but the change is literally one line. It changes the um, security context, or sorry, the context of BB BBS to this. This redirects to this, and evidently in some cases when that redirect, the redirection fails. Um, so this simply changes it to not redirect, but rather go directly to the um, the, the current location of the context file. Um, Andrew raised a couple of issues about it, um, but it looks like it's safe enough to do. Um, notably that if it already had the redirected context in it, because somebody had manually put that in before passing it in, we automatically add the BBS context to it, uh, which would mean two reader, two contexts that are identical. But it turns out that for this um, testing it in the JSON LD playground, that that's fine to do. It's not a sin. So I think we're okay to um, add it in. So um, I presume this will get updated once we do a few more pull request merges. Um, Ian, I think this one's ready and you're getting ready to merge this one or it's still in draft though? Yeah, there's a couple of uh, integration tests that were failing. So I synced everything up with the uh, main branch and I'm just rerunning the tests right now. Okay. Otherwise it uh, should be good to go. Okay, and this one as well? Uh, that's Jamie's. Yeah. So, uh, Daniel had requested some changes, and I don't know if, Daniel, if you've had a chance to review the updates that Jamie's done. I haven't quite yet. Um, I, was yeah, gonna, definitely. I was I was going to wait for Daniel's review, and then I was going to review it after that. Yeah, so there was, I had some confusion because I didn't realize that the old implementation was had some mistakes, and then just aligning those with Daniel's, like, uh what he did but um yeah those were updated a while ago and i think they're way better now so hopefully you can get it done but um 
I kind of, yeah, I'm just trying to finish the rest of the endorsement stuff based off this branch. So. I will, uh, uh, I'll make sure and give you some more feedback or uh, an approval on that today so you can move on with your life. So, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, good. All right. Um, so we'll try to, Ian, um, since you're already running the test, let's try to get this one merged first, and then we'll just go through all of the ones up here, updating the main. If it passes, we go forward. Obviously, we bypass this one, and then we'll um, get get everything in. Yep. Yeah, I good. Think, uh, pin, pin block version, we can probably just merge that one, right? If that one's good to go. Oh, it's already ready to go? Yeah, it's got a little green check on it. No, resolve conflict. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, shoot. Okay. Good try, though. I'll uh I'll regenerate that lock file and and push up for that. Okay, one. so it should should be good soon. Okay, um, and I'm happy to keep an eye on all those during the day and just do one after another without as we go. Okay, um, a couple of them to issues. Um, so this one's talked about. Um, this one is interesting. I noticed the same conversations going on with AFJ, making sure that everything works. Um, go ahead, Daniel, and talk about this one, and then let's decide what to do. Yeah. Um, so I, um, I've i got my setup where I've been banging ACPI and Credo together to see what happens. Um, and uh, this was the first issue that I that I ran into after I was actually finally able to get like the dev release of AFJ, I mean, Credo, um, going. Um, so it's strictly expecting as part of the out of band invitation in the handshake protocol did exchange 1.1 now, instead of, uh, the did exchange 1.0. Um, I've got some, uh, changes locally. I haven't pushed them up to a, a PR just yet. Um, I could probably do that open it in draft just to get it out there. Um, where I've just gone through and just um, added additional uh, tweaking our admin API and a couple of spots in the out of band protocol and in did exchange where um, determining which handshake protocols in use is determined based on the strings getting passed in and all that stuff, uh, mm -hmm. changing those points to accept the 1.1 as well. Um, it looks very similar to... Uh, I think some of the changes that were required for out of band 1.1 to be supported and, and work. So I, I'm yeah. kind of following that as a pattern and hoping, hope, hoping that that will be enough to, uh, to get it working as expected. Um, but I'll, I'll go through and make sure that we've got the backwards compatibility still, as well as, uh, resolving this issue with AFJ. Okay. So you've got this one, you're running with it. Yeah. Appreciate it. Good. That's excellent. Um, um, that one's already talked about this one. We've got a couple of notes on the log messaging processing time. Um, we're going to, we'll probably not do this immediately, but, um, this will probably get bumped up. So the idea here is that let's at least get locally in the logs processing times for various things so we can look at it when we need to. Um, the background of that um, from a BC Gov perspective is sometimes we get um, certain like it, certain events where we're issuing a credential and it takes a very long time. And we're really not sure exactly where that time is spent. It doesn't really make sense. Um, and and then it might take two or three times, and then then it works. And and we don't really know why. So um, the idea here in in BC Wallet, they put in uh, an, an ability to log things so we can see it. And the idea here would be to add a similar capability on the um, that side. So we don't have to do a, there has been definite talk of using tracing for that. Um, the, the tracing capability is definitely a way to do it. 
Um, but that requires more coordination across various things. And so the idea here is let's have each component provide some technique with minimum overhead, and then um, let's figure that out. Patrick? Uh, when you say a very long time, is that like 30 seconds, five minutes, 30 minutes? Um, it, it goes from 30 seconds to even two minutes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So very strange. And this is in the wild. So we're talking, Once you know, we're on the uh, people on, on the uh, wallet team are talking to lawyers for two minutes in awkward silences. So right. it's not, it's not the most fun thing in the world. All right. Can I ask them out there, Dave? Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so this one will be closed. Um, so this one is about um, one agent getting a peer did from another and using the same one in response. And there's really no requirement for that. It's not a bad strategy because you know the other side must support it if it sent it, but it's also not a requirement that it do that. So we definitely want to do not want to require that. So um, Sheldon has removed that um, check in the um, in the test. So you can admit a peer did too, and whatever the other side wants to send back is fine as long as it's a did basically, and it's a qualified did. So that's there. Um, Jamie's working through this. I think you've got a PR coming relatively soon. Jamie, you were sounding like you were pretty happy with this. Yeah, it's working with manual testing, but some of the integration tests are, I'm just working okay. through those now. But yeah, I'm waiting for the other one to get merged and then I'll open it. Yeah. Um, I think that's most. Oh, um, this is being done in a plugin. Thanks all for input to Akif um, on on what to do. Um, I think that's there. Uh, he's he's pretty well completed it, and um, so it'll be in the plugins repo. We're going to merge it into the uh, or deploy it relatively quickly into the. Uh, BC Gov Dev Traction environment and and start to use it, and then it'll be used as as mentioned in the um, protocol for app attestation, and will be available for others to use if they want to. Um, those are the main ones. I think I did have another discuss. What was it? Um, no. No. Um, these are old discuss, so I'll probably remove the label from them. Um, any other um issues or or pull requests that we want to talk about? Patrick, yeah, I always have a few things I can discuss. So uh, one of the things is something I discussed with uh, Akif and has to do with. Uh, how Akapai handles errors. So for now, there's these different errors that are raised. And we found that you don't have too much control over like what status codes are returned and stuff. I might open an issue eventually. Uh, one library I found was the AIO HTTP catcher, which is a sort of way to centralize your errors uh, and you can really get into what message you want to return and what status codes you want to return. Um, I can link it in here. I don't know exactly what it would involve uh, in the code, but it seemed pretty interesting to um, have a solution. I can just link it here. So that's something because uh, I'm starting to look, especially for the VC API routes, like one of the goals I would have eventually is to for ICAPI to be able to pass many test suites. And sometimes they will ask like, oh, well, you need to return a, a 400, for example. But currently the validation middle, middleware returns a 422. Um, so that's how it goes. So I would like to investigate a way to have a bit more uh, freedom or around what error, co uh, error codes are returned based on the routes of the uh, the API. I'm mostly concerned about like uh, request validation. You know, sometimes you might want to return a 400 uh, 
401, uh, so on, depending on the case, 404, maybe if it's uh, something related to DIDs. Uh, I think this would uh, change. I, I don't know exactly the impact it would have, but it's something maybe uh, could be interesting to see. So it's to really centralize all the errors that are uh, mm -hmm. raised by mostly by the admin API. Um, another thing I wanted to touch on had to do with verification. So hang on one like, sec. Yeah. Hang on one sec. So let's. Uh, the concern here would be that this number up in the corner. Um, last updated right. and these um, is it just not used enough and there and and then and that automatically leads to we already use um, AIO HTTP should we uh, you know so it makes sense to use it on the other hand um, it's not a, a commonly used library is there something else we should be using anyone have any comments suggestions ideas on that This might just be my own perception, but I, I feel like AIO HTTP is has increased in popularity since ActPy first started. So I, I wouldn't say yeah. that it's particularly yeah. out of the ordinary to use it by any means. And yeah. so, and so, combining it with this catcher might not be a bad idea. In other words, yeah. I mean, I feel like I need to understand a little bit more of of the problem that uh, Patrick is experiencing to to say whether this is the right solution or not. Yeah. Um, but so I, I wouldn't uh, rule it out, out outright or anything. Yeah. Yeah. My, my most big concern is so when you get out of the routes folder, you know, and you get into function, you want to raise errors, right? And when you raise errors, uh, you're bound to the errors you raise, like, or maybe there's a way to make some custom errors that are going to raise a specific status code uh as when you are in like i would like the ability for example to raise uh a json response with a full like i can define what status code i can return and the message you know so when we're validating a class uh if it gives a specific you know invalid credential subject i, I would like to return a 400 error that says that has a message field that says this is an invalid credential subject or however. And currently the validation middleware just returns a 422 invalid request, right? So that's, um, this is the type of uh, limitation I'm currently in. Uh, I haven't spent too much time on it. So this, yeah, this is like one of the options I found that I wanted to bring for discussion. If there's other ways, uh, you know, I can also, uh, try to look, uh, yeah, there's other ways to do this. Do you understand a bit better? Uh... I think so. Um, I, I would be interested in having an issue open to kind of capture um, yes. Yes. what you've experienced. I think that would be good just to give a little bit more time for, for deep thought and um, considering the specific cases you're addressing. Uh, my, my gut reaction is um, I wonder if, some of the validation that's occurring in the schema then just needs to move out of the schema and just into the handler of of the request instead, uh, it, especially if it's resulting in that 422 that's not particularly helpful. Um, but um, again, that's kind of coming from, I, I haven't spent as much time thinking about it as you have yet. So um, uh, yeah, not sure if that's the best approach or not, or solves all the issues that you're hoping to solve yet. Yeah, sounds good. Uh... I think expanding on what Patrick said, uh, it's kind of like a little bit of a tangent, but not so much. Uh, this is probably like just make, make more formal and more consistent the the RESTful type of endpoints that we have in the admin interface. Another problem that we have raised in the past is sim like similar topic. Uh, we're using the post verb a little bit too leniently. So if you want to be very, very strict or kind of like argumentative about how, how to go with this, we might want to get like a bigger conversation about cleaning up in general, the rest endpoints and you know, not only the error handling, but also like what verb is being used for what action. Uh, 
I'm I'm not like a super strict like believer in like you just need to be CRUD because then we wouldn't have the admin API. But at the same time, using post for everything is also not good. <laughs> so I'm just kind of wanted to note that maybe that needs to be taken into account for a broader conversation in, in this in this realm. It's a hard one because that breaks breaks things. I I haven't seen too many that just in when you know when i go through the admin page i don't see too many that seem wrong but we i think we've we've done much better in recent years but when we were setting it up in the beginning so some of the oldest endpoints there okay. was a bit of a happiness in in using post for for stuff that might have been better with maybe a put right like the, it really depends on what you're doing uh, stuff might have been fixed since I last looked. I just think it, it, if we do this type of kind of like rationalization of the HTTP endpoints yeah. and RESTful uh, interfaces, it might be good to just like look at it as a whole. Yeah, yeah I, I would say also like, you know, with all the recent work for Anon Chris, there's new endpoints being added, the VC API thing, maybe a sort of seeing all the duplications that there is and think if that's still the, the right way to do it would make sense. Are you talking, Emiliano, about like the issuance protocols and these type of endpoints or more like uh, agent management endpoints like the wallet and the credentials? The, and... I, I I would have to like look it, look it up. I remember seeing the, the endpoints. I can probably fish a couple out. Uh, I, I think they were sort of kind of like here and there kind of like you know, bread, okay. breadcrumbs across the, the whole API. It might not be a lot that needs to be fixed, but it would if we do, it, it, I mean, I think it's making it consistent with H, with the REST and HTTP, since, it's a, since it is an HTTP interface that we're using, it might be good. Mm -hmm. And it goes alongside having proper error messages and not like 500 or 422 generic error messages when, when the, the endpoints get called. Just for my knowledge, what is a 422 officially? It's like an un, un, unprocessable uh, entity. Yeah, unprocessable entity. Okay. A 400 is an invalid request, like the client sent an invalid request. For yeah. 22, it's a request that the server cannot process. Okay. Which might be the right, the right error message if it is an unprocessable entity and you don't know why. Yeah, but if you if you know the specifics, we should return like a a better better validation message. But with the catcher, we get the idea there is we would get much better ones. Yeah. You know, as it says here, much better message, and we could control the code. That's basically right. what yeah, you're saying. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, All I right. Had a, I had a, um, a, one one thing I wanted to mention if if there's. 30 seconds, uh, because you said yeah. about issues. Um, there's that issue that uh, Jason Leach opened recently about um, basically logging some timing for some yeah. specific methods, so yeah. adding some instrumentation. I think maybe we should revisit that as well as the per tenant logging. I, I forget where we ended up yeah, with yeah. logging, if it is finished or not, but that yeah. would be very useful, uh, at least for us. Yeah, I'd really like to see that get into traction and get used, and then we revisit the adding more information to the logging, mm -hmm. which I think is what you suggested earlier today. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, quickly before we go, I've got two more topics, so um, give me a half second more. Release 1.0, um, I think we are very, very close. Um, I would like um, to you know finish 12, and then let's get 1.0 out right after it. It's long, long overdue. Um, for those that haven't heard, um, Akapai was nominated for a United Nations um, uh, Open Source Award. And government, so open source. In, yeah. What's that? Like government, open source yeah. applications. Yeah. yeah. Um, even if we don't um, win that, we, it would be good to combine that with the 1.0 release. It's long overdue. So let's, I'm gonna start to look at all the things we need to do to, to make 1.0 happen. 
but it's not much in the code area. It's more in the around it. So that would be my goal. If everyone could think about, okay, here's what needs to happen before 1.0. Maybe that's what I'll do is open an issue um, and, and get people contributing to that. Um, so that's one. Second thing is ACAPUG next week is a, up against the same time as the um, DSR webinar. And I'd like to cancel the ACAPUG and encourage people to go to the um, DSR presentation. Are we good with that? Or should we have the ACAPUG? Uh, what is the webinar? I've, I've not heard of this yet. Oh, it's... Um, DSR is going to do a, a presentation on um, the indie work they're doing, the um, AFJ work they've done as far as, as ledger agnostic um, and various things to do with um, um, the whole identity space. And and so I think <clears throat> I think it's an important one. They've been building up to it. Um, Hyperledger has really been encouraging people. So. Um, I think we should support it by by not competing with it, if you will. Um, yeah. We could have a follow up maintainers if we need it, um, but if if that's okay, I think we should um, encourage people to go to that. So I'll send out a notification that it's been canceled. There's the event. Yeah, Cardano and OnCred's checked Agent Framework. It's got everything in it, so um, I, I think it's worth it's worth us taking a look at. Thanks, Shara, for posting that. Yeah, did, did I send the right link? It, the, it, it's listed as February 8th, uh, Thursday. Oh, that's the third oh, link. For some reason, oh, you know what? They rescheduled it. Okay, well, that's a whole never mind. You're right. I've got it down here as, um, as there. Um, oh, never mind. Oh. But I encourage everyone to go to it, you know? So never mind that. Acapug's on next week. We're going to talk about release 1.0, blah, blah, blah. Okay, sorry about that. Take care, all. See ya. Sorry for running over. Thanks. Thanks.